Um, I started studying influence and persuasion back in 2009. You can see here after I had my MBA, um, I went to the Harvard ALM program on as a master's of psychology program and studied uh, psychology of influence and persuasion and adapted that to raising capital. And in all of my psychology courses, I was the only non-psychiatrist psychologist in those classrooms. I was like the black sheep business person trying to figure out how to use this stuff in business. During my MBA, my undergrad, no one taught a single class on influence and persuasion or even mentioned that this field exists, which is a big disservice to, to many people. So um, I studied Robert Cialdini's work early on, and it was really the basis for all of the Family Office Club and all of our success using these strategies. And so that's why I'm excited to share it with you today. Um, it can be massively impactful for your business as well. Um, one of the earliest self-help books ever written was by Earl Nightingale, um, and it's called The Strangest Secret. And he talked about how what you think about most of the time is what you become. And like many self-help people, he knew something worked. He didn't know exactly why it, it worked, but they've now proven that what media you consume, what you bring in and what you absorb, you know, results in what comes out the other side. Everyone knows that who's brought up kids. You have them watch you know, uh, a TV show they shouldn't be watching and they're using different vocabulary the next morning, right? So uh, that's true with adults as well. Input equals output. We're going to go over that later. These are my three daughters that are a little bit older now. Uh, the point of showing this is I don't want to waste your time here. I could be spending time with them. You could be spending time with your team, with your family. So that's why we try to cover so much uh, per hour here. Um, and just let me know if I go too fast over something, just raise your hand and we can, we can back up a little bit, go over it. So first of all, why study this? Why does influence and persuasion even exist? Why is it more powerful this year than last year? And next year, it's going to be even more powerful for you to know. And it's because there's an information overload. Uh, it would be ridiculous to claim that you know everything about managing hotels, everything there is to know in the whole world about managing hotels, or everything there is to know about self-storage. If somebody claims that, you could say, oh, well, can you design a self-storage property in AutoCAD? Probably not. Oh, well, do you know how to analyze and negotiate every line item of a term sheet on a bridge loan on a, on a self-storage property? Maybe you do, but you pro probably don't also know how to use AutoCAD, right? So nobody knows everything about anything is the point. But in 1873, John Stuart Mill actually claimed to know everything about everything. And he you know, was the last credible person to ever try to make that claim. Nowadays, that'd be ridiculous because there's over 400,000 scientific journals that are published every year. And there's not one scientist who knows everything about every paper published in even one of those scientific journals. So information is expanding faster than ever before, and it results in cognitive overload. We're all too busy. It doesn't matter who you are. You're all busier than ever. That's what everyone says everywhere. Um, and if you think about it, you have to rely upon shortcuts to figure things out. So you're not going to go, if, you, if I say here today, hey, you should read this book because it's excellent. And I've made money by using the strategies and I highly recommend it. You may not go and buy that book, just knee jerk, but you might go to the Amazon page, see the ratings. And with the ratings are five out of five with 400 reviews, then you may buy the book because you heard about it from someone, which we'll get to how that works later. But then you also saw the social proof that you know, hundreds of other people rated it very highly and you might buy the book. You're not going to go and text everybody in your family read 20 reviews on Goodreads, even review the reviews on Amazon, research a summary of the book, and then decide if you're going to buy the book. You would just go out of business if you made decisions that slowly. So you have to make decisions faster and faster, and there's more information in the world. So you have to rely upon shortcuts and just jump to conclusions to just survive the day and get through incoming messages on your Slack and text message and social media and email inbox. So the more information there is, the more that influence and persuasion works because everyone's trying to get through their day and decide, is this investment manager credible? Uh, is this counterparty going to be someone who's going to be a good steward of our wealth? Is this someone who is an authority or an expert in the field or not? And they instantly decide that within microseconds. They say that from 50 feet away, you subconsciously automatically judge um, a human of the opposite sex as attractive or not in 0.3 seconds from 50 feet away. So imagine how quick when someone looks at your email signature, they're judging whether they want to do business with you or when they shake your hand or when they first pick up your book or pick up your pitch deck. In the first couple of seconds, they're deciding whether they're going to read that pitch deck in, in, less than a, in less than one second. So that's the importance of influence. The other importance is that we all want to get more responses to our emails. We want to get more deals closed. We want to get more meetings. We want to get more people complying with us and saying yes. 
Um, and the more that we can do that, then the better use of time we have every day and we can get more done. The other thing to remember is that in the investment world, there's often no prize for getting second place. Many times people will say, oh, let's find a new real estate manager in the, the mobile home park space or in industrial, uh, or let's find someone within biotech or the stem cell space. Um, they may not invest anything in the number two provider. They may do research and conduct due diligence on 15 providers or meet 50 of them, but they're often allocate only to one or two. So coming in second place may not count at all. And you need to have a lot of ducks in a row, or you might be eliminated very quickly from the process because people will just assume that you don't take your business seriously, or it must be a startup, or it's not something that's really formalized yet. And they'll move on very quickly, many times, not all the time, but many times. And if they don't move on, they may feel like they have a lot of leverage in the negotiation. So they might read it as, oh, it's a newer firm. Let's ask for this much equity and not this much equity. So it'll hurt you either way. And one thing we always encourage people to do uh, through our workshops is to flip your energy from focusing instead of focusing on sales and focusing on reaching out to people and then hoping they'll reply. Instead, focus your energy on attracting investors and attracting people so that the investors are coming towards you. And we're going to get through how to do that later today too. And throughout today, there's going to be so many different strategies we talk about. There's definitely going to be two or three you can stack on top of each other to create an unfair advantage. If you look at somebody else who's raising capital for the exact same thing you are, whether they're in a different city or not, to a similar type of investor base, having a couple of these strategies working for you will give you a huge advantage over your former self or over that other group. And by the end of the day, you'll be able to identify two to four strategies. That if you just did that and forgot everything else we talked about, that you'd have a, an unfair advantage in the marketplace. Just like if you go to a lake and you try to spear a fish swimming by, it might not go so well for you. But if you take the time to study the lake, position yourself and find the waterfall where the fish are jumping, then the fish might jump right into your mouth and you don't have to be chasing around in the water and it, you'll catch more fish and it will be less, less effort to do so. So positioning is a big part of this. And we talk about positioning at almost all of our workshops. I'm not a super extrovert person. Like the last thing I want to do is go around a big event like the one I hosted last month and go shaking everyone's hands and trying to meet everyone and introduce myself. I never, ever do that at any event. Um, so I use positioning and marketing and hosting the events, et cetera. So I don't have to do that. And I like to position our company through eBooks and videos and webinars, et cetera, so that when my salespeople get on the phone, they have to explain things and reassure people that we have a 20 person team. We've been doing this for over a decade, but at the end of the day, it's not all about like a hard sale. It's not like our super skill is sales. All right. So influence and persuasion has completely changed my life. Every single part of it, uh, from how I met my wife to, um, what I studied at Harvard to, launching my business to acquiring choke points and studying Robert Cialdini, everything I've done in investor relations. We've now done over $30 million in total revenue uh, since we launched Family Office Club. We're doing about $5 million a year in revenue now. So slides a bit outdated there. And depending on who you ask, we're probably a top five thought leader globally in the family office industry. We've written more books than anyone else with the most popular YouTube channel, most popular visited website at familyoffices.com, the most listened to podcast. It's, it's like... Um, 500 people competing against me for that title, but we've been able to achieve good positioning in a really valuable industry is the main point. 